coming back to my channel. I'm Stephanie, if you're new here. I feel like this room lately has been used quite a bit in my videos, but it's the only room in the house close to a window and the lighting is much better in here and the kids aren't by me. So this is how I can talk to you guys a little bit nicer and a little bit more quiet. But right now I just wanna like talk to you guys first because um, I don't want them to know what I'm doing. So, because if I come out and say, hey, we're gonna do some training or something like that, they're gonna like totally act different and not really respond to how I wanna talk to you guys. So, that is what we're gonna be talking about today. I know I had a lot of people, not through YouTube, but through many years of, you know, people coming to me and saying, hey, um, I wanna homeschool my kids. Where do I start? What do I do? One of the biggest things that I tell them, if anything, is can you get your child to sit? Now, depending how old they are. So like if they're already like, you know, 10 years old and stuff like that, and I think they should know already by 10 how to sit. But otherwise, if that's the problem, then you just sit and train them, even if they're 10 years old. So. Um, I know a lot of people have different parenting ways when it comes to getting their kids to listen. That helps with being able to homeschool and teach the other kids. So I know a lot of people think, oh, well, I don't want to do that to my child or um, that's, you know, too mean to have your child sit that long of a period of time or whatever. When you're homeschooling so many kids, you kind of need uh, little ones to be able to sit. I had to do a lot of sit training last year with uh, the twins when they were four. And a lot of times I just took a moment of the day and I said, okay guys, we're gonna sit on the couch. And a lot of times they didn't like that. So we had to figure out ways to keep them content or um, more or less listen to what I'm saying. All right, so I'm just gonna give you a couple of ideas before I show you with the kids and how they respond to what I'm gonna say to them. So they have no idea what I'm gonna be doing and I wanted to catch you guys um, doing this now because I know later they're just not gonna do it. So, um, and I'm not gonna prepare them or anything. So whatever happens is gonna just be by what we already did in the past or how well they behave or listen to me. So some of the things that we've gone through with like grocery shopping or going out to eat and being able to sit at a table going out to eat um that has to do with me and him um we've had a lot of people come up to our table and we're like how can you get all them kids to sit and be you know and listen and um just be content like that but it's too hard to explain when you're just sitting in there so a lot of it we just train from little on from baby on and that just how easy it was for us. Um, I think it has to do with your personality, how you are um, with certain situations. Uh, I know there's a lot of different types of parenting where um, you want to be their best friend and you don't want to hurt their feelings and you don't want to do something that's gonna bother them or irritate them. And then you got the other extreme where you're like, you can't move, you can't do nothing, please just sit and be quiet and blah, 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 do all that kind of stuff. And then you got people that in the middle with parenting. And I think with me and Lauren, we're kind of in the middle, kind of more, you know, we need you to sit. We just need you to sit for a little bit and we need you to be quiet. Okay, so let me just um, start with Gage because Gage is our first child together and um we've gone through me like me and him raising him together and i already parented he never had children before so we both had to work on how to train and do that we made a lot of it uh, we did a lot of like probably big mistakes with raising gage in certain areas um because we were still both new like it was like nine years i think after i had you know blaine um from when we had gage so it was all like new to us too but um we one of the things that we would do is like you know we would go grocery shopping and um we would take him out of his car seat 
And then a lot of times we would go grocery shopping and we would take them in the cart, out of the cart, and we would let them walk around. Um, we would go out to eat and we would take them out of the high chair. And it just caused a lot of situations that um, taught Gage that he has free will to do whatever he wants. And after we, you know, kind of noticed that, uh, there were some things that we needed to change. And when I got pregnant with Eli, I knew right away that there was some things that we needed to kind of go over and do different. Um, and that was some of the things that we did early on was if we were gonna go somewhere and the child was gonna be in their car seat for a little bit, um, they just needed to be content in their car seat. And you could have toys or extra things. Um, sometimes with sit training, there's no toys involved. They just have to be bored for a good maybe 15 minutes at the most. And they need to learn that sometimes you just don't get something. So from little on, we just figured out what that child needed to be able to be content for that amount of time. Um, when we would go grocery shopping, he was never allowed to get out of the grocery cart or the grocery cart. Um, when we went out to eat, he was never allowed to, you know, come out of the high chair. And that just kind of showed Eli at the time that he didn't have free will to do whatever he wanted to do. Um, so that was kind of helped us out. Now with me and Lauren, me and Lauren have really strong personalities as in, okay, you're going to sit and we just need you to sit. Like I said, we just need you to sit for a little bit. Um, and I know at one year old, that's kind of tricky because you know, are they teething? Are they going through some stuff? So it kind of, you just do in that situation what you need to do. But in general, you know, if you have a child that's like three years old and he's still not being able to sit, there's still things that you can do to help, you know, pack some, you know, extra things up that you normally wouldn't give that child and you only give it to them when you go out to eat. We did that so many times. I would just like stick things in my purse and we'd be sitting at a restaurant and Lauren's like, where did that come from? So a lot of times um, I would just pick out like treats or um, just using things to keep them content for a little bit, you know, suckers, gum, whatever it was, crayons or something special that they only got when we go out to eat. So in them situations, I think it's more like um, you need to do what you need to do as a parent to just make your child happy. But if you're just doing, uh, if you're doing sit training in your home, you can start out with no toys at all. Nothing to make that child sit. I don't do candy and I don't do treats when we do sit training. Um, that's totally different than being in a restaurant and you don't want people to hear your child scream or yell or throw a fit. That I don't mind um, doing something, but that child only knows that I only do it at that time. They don't. They know that if we go home and I say you need to sit, they they know they're not going to get candy. So I think, like I said, I think it's more based on the parent's personality versus the child's personality. And I know you're going to have, you know, children that are not able to do a lot of this, depending on where they are in. Um, age or circumstances that they're going through. Um, I'm talking about children that are mentally able to handle sitting without throwing a fit. Um, so I know I'm kind of rambling off a little bit and I'm sure you guys want to just see the kids, uh, their response to what I want to do. But I'm really excited. I'm kind of like questioning my parenting right now when I do this tomorrow. So I'm kind of like, mm, this better turn out the way I want it to. No prepping with this one. So um, a lot of times when I start my videos out, I'll be like, hey guys, we're going to be doing a video or I'm going to be doing a video. I need everybody to be quiet or whatever. But um, that doesn't always happen either. So especially, see, you can tell because Evelyn's already making noise over here. But I wanted to do this for you guys and I wanted to prepare you guys ahead of time that I'm going to sneak it on them and see what they do. So I hope you guys enjoy what's going to happen and um, we'll see how this turns out. So 
hopefully you guys enjoy it um i'll come back on and talk to you guys about you know what happened and what could have been better or what changed or all that kind of stuff so but i'll come back on and we'll talk about it later okay okay so the reason why i had you guys come and sit what do you think what do you think i was doing to have you guys come and sit what do you think Do you know what that means? If mama says you need to come and sit, what does that mean? Do you know? Can you guess? What is it called? If mama tells you to come and sit, what is it called? Listening. Listening and what else? Sitting down. Sitting down. Right? So, do you always sit when mama tells you to sit? Yeah. You do? <laughs> oh. So, remember last year when we did this? What was it called when we did this? When I said, okay, Nash and Lachlan, you need to come down. Come and sit. What is that called? Sit what? Sit, sit what? Train. <laughs> sit training? <laughs> Right? Do you remember that last year when we did that? I said, okay, Nash and Lachlan, we need to come and sit. What? Okay, so now I'm gonna ask you some questions and you need to answer the best you can, okay? Nash or Lachlan, what, why do you need to sit? Because you say. Um, why? What, okay, here's a question. What is sit training? What is it? Training how to sit. Training how to sit. What else is it called? Being what? Being, pa Being patient. Being patient. Why is it important to sit and be patient? All the big kids are behind them laughing. Why is it important to sit? If we go to a restaurant, why is it important to sit and be quiet? What does that do? Yeah, it teaches you to be patient. But is there other people eating in the restaurant? And do they want to hear noisy kids? No. No. Do the restaurant people want noisy kids and kids that are crazy running around the restaurant? No. So then why is it important for us to teach you how to sit and be patient? So you don't run around. So you don't run around? But do you think it's important? Yeah. <laughs> all right so you guys kind of saw what the boys did with the training uh, they kind of knew that i had something like up my sleeve of what i wanted to do but they knew that i was going to record them doing something so their overall reaction wasn't exactly what i wanted so i wanted to actually see if they were gonna like actually sit or if they were gonna just like goof off and totally not do anything. So they actually, um, they knew what I was talking about because we did it last year. So I just wanted to uh, show you guys or kind of help you guys with a little bit of SID training. And Evelyn is two and we didn't, we did not start with her yet. Um, but I probably will be starting pretty soon with her and we'll just do some like tips that you can do is like I said in the beginning of the video is just sitting them down for like two minutes at a time 
and it could be like reading a book or looking at a colorful book or something that's going to keep their attention for two minutes and then every day if you can kind of do it at the same time that kind of helps um them know that you're serious and these are the things that you're going to do um nash and lachlan we still struggle with a little bit of stuff throughout the day not necessarily during a moment but um they like to walk around a lot and be with people and do things but sometimes i need them to just sit and they uh they have a hard time with that because they're so people oriented that they need to be around people and interact with people so for them to have to sit is really hard for them but um these are the things that i need my kids to do especially with us being a large family i like them to be able to be quiet when we go to certain places and i kind of just talked to them like we didn't like you know put fear into them or you know make it like this bad thing but when we would go out to eat and stuff like that we just kind of always made sure that they were sitting in one spot and they didn't get to change positions they didn't get a choice and i think if you always did that um they would know that every time you go out to eat that they didn't have a choice but every time that you let them up and every time that you give them another choice and another choice they know that every single time so we just don't do that when we go out to eat um now when it went to like when it goes to like grocery shopping and stuff like that like that if they're old enough to walk then they need to stay by my car and they can't move anywhere else they either have to hold on to the car or stay near so that's what we do grocery shopping um if we were to go to like the library and stuff like that for like homeschool depending on how your library is if they don't mind that kids are making noise and stuff but otherwise that would be another thing is just keeping your kids to learn to be a little bit quieter in certain area like in my own home it they're always loud my kids are always loud um i am sensitive to noise big sensitivity to that so that's going to be one importance that i you know try to control in our house as much as possible but um so other than that i hope you know maybe i gave you some insight to what to do with that if you guys have any more questions leave them down in the comments down below and i can um maybe go over some more with you guys or maybe come up with like a printout or something on some things that would help like you know packing things in your purse that they only get to play with when you go to certain places um following through with your choices um like sticker books activity books when you go places maybe a deck of cards or suckers or you know i don't like i said i don't always reward but if there's a moment where i need my child to just be quiet for a little bit i'm going to give them something to work on so um we've always did that at restaurants and now that the kids are older we really don't have to do anything because they already know that they need to be good at a restaurant um we didn't do a lot of training with the kids it was just basic stuff i think it's just if you tell them that every time you go to a restaurant give them the rules before you go into the restaurant so even if at home before we go to a restaurant me and my husband are like okay so what do you guys remember okay when we get to the restaurant what are we going to do or how are we going to act or you know stuff like that or you just don't get to go and we get a babysitter for you so that many things but whatever comes out of our mouth is actually what we do there is no this or that there is no i'm going to do something different uh me and my husband has have always been that way um I know <laughs> lately he thinks with Evelyn that I've been giving him, giving her, he's gonna laugh at this when he watches this video, but he thinks that every single time that Evelyn does something naughty, he thinks or whatever, that I give into it, but I don't. I'm just, I think I have more patience for Evelyn for some reason, I don't know what it is, but I let things slide a little bit more and I look at, okay, so here's some of the factors that you look at, and this is what I kind of tell him, is are they teething? Are they tired? Are they hungry? These are three like top things with kids where meltdowns happen. Don't go to a restaurant if your kid has, you know, um, is teething maybe because you can't expect a teething child to like maybe sit for that period of time. Um, if they're tired, I don't want to go to a restaurant when I'm tired. So 
think of like a child's needs when you are doing something that uh, you expect them to have her outcome with. So that would be, you know, that would be hard to. And then if they're sick, they're sick, tired, or teething, you know, some of them things, like think about how you would feel if you went somewhere and you wouldn't want somebody to make you feel any different than that. So try, I try to look at the big picture of what's going on first with what they're going through. Um, I do have a child and I can't remember if I mentioned this in the video first. And I think I did is Declan um, struggles a little bit with this. So he's not a bad child. He doesn't do anything usually to be naughty or whatever. He might be like, pick on the twins a little bit, but he's more where if I say, okay, we're going to leave in a couple minutes and you need to get your shirt, shorts, and your shoes on. And he already has clothes on. So to him, he doesn't understand why he needs a shirt, a short or and shorts and shoes on. He, he can't comprehend that all at one time. So he kind of melts down like really quickly. And I know that with him. So I have to do things different with him. Now, if he was completely, I don't want to say the word disobey because I don't want anybody to take that offensive, but if he's completely, you know, disobeying me or doesn't want to because he has his favorite shirt on. But if we usually say, if we want you to change your shirt because we just need you to change your shirt, we need them to understand that. And with him, he has a hard time with that. So I, I kind of change my feelings when it comes to stuff like that. But like Nash and Lachlan are pretty good at like, hey, we're going to leave. You need to get socks on. So we kind of just make it known. If we say, no, you cannot have soda when we go to the restaurant. They know when we go to the restaurant, they're not going to get soda. Um, but Nash and Lachlan still test us a little bit, but they're only five. So we still go through things. Um, not everybody is perfect when you do all this like parenting, sit training skills and all them kind of skills that everybody wants to share and expect it to work out for every child. Um, I think it's based on personality and how that child reacts to certain things. So not every every child is gonna be the same. So we've gone through many different uh, age groups and things with our kids and we're still, you know, learning too. So hopefully you guys got something out of this video and some of this made sense to you guys. I think it's just sticking, uh, just uh, staying strong and not losing it when your, your kids, uh, misbehave and stuff like that. But, um, and this is another thing my husband's gonna laugh at because uh, there's times where I'm just like, I can't focus past the meltdown that's just happening. And when it comes to like going places and stuff like that, we try to make sure that that kind of stuff doesn't happen when we go places. But um, I'm still not always perfect when it comes to that. It's just, these are the kind of things that we've done, we've done to help our kids know um, when we go places and the rules and stuff. And like, even at home, if I say, okay, it's Bible time and whatever, I want you to sit, they kind of know what that means. But, um, and that just takes time, it takes training. It's not like, oh, one month I'm gonna do it. And then the next month I'm gonna do, well, a child can't catch on to that. So I think with us homeschooling, us being home with the kids all the time, that kind of helps a little bit with um, being able to work on that. So I don't know, I'm just rambling, but okay. So hopefully you guys liked today's video. Don't forget to give me a big thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Keep, keep going for a little bit. Hudson, go up there and like pile on top of them. <laughs>